Hello, my name's Hassan Khan. Welcome to my 24. And in this session, I'm going to be fishing with ready tied rigs. Now, in terms of venue choice, I've gone for a little nostalgic trip down memory lane. I probably haven't fished this venue for the best part of 15 years. It's the beautiful, mature tree line reservoir that is Naseby Reservoir in Northamptonshire. Classically, I've picked the hottest 24 hours of the year to do this. So finger crossed we can battle the elements, put those ready rigs to good use, and show you a Naseby carp or two. Naseby Reservoir, I fished it years ago, sort of in my formative years. Uh, being from Leicester, it's not too far away. It's a beautiful, mature venue. Um, your typical sort of reservoir, relatively shallow and the water levels fluctuate. Essentially, you've got pods of carp that sort of roam around the reservoir. And there's a lot of area, especially sort of the far end, which you actually cannot access at all. And the fish can sort of group up there for safety, but, if you hit it right, fish accurately and well, yeah, you can certainly reap the rewards. There's fantastic fishing to have on offer. So I've just come into the point swim. I've had a little look out and I've seen some fish showing at relatively long range. I'm not gonna let around. I'm gonna get a couple of solid bags straight out on them and hopefully nick a quick bite. But before I do that, I need to start my 24. So initially I came down, I'd say with a little bit of a preconceived idea from fishing it all of 12, maybe even more years ago. Uh, and solid bags were definitely an absolute winner. So I thought, ready rigs, solid bag, ready rigs, out on some solid bags, obviously showing fish. And that's often in the past, and I know it's a long time ago, caught me fish on Naseby. For me, I'd say there was a little bit of a stigma around people using ready tied rigs a while ago. Having used them now and sort of seeing the industry and, and, and how it is, there's a lot of things that have been made, produced, or available to buy that make angling easier and more accessible for everyone. And no doubt they help you catch fish. No two ways about it at the end of the day. So ready rigs sit in that window for me. A lot of people might frown upon them, discredit them, sort of reinforce the stereotype that they're for beginners and, and sort of almost have a little bit of a negative connotation towards them. In my opinion, there's lots of other things that you could view in a similar way if you really think about it. For instance, your pop-ups, um, your bait, it's all rolled for you, it's ready to go. You put it out there, catch fish on it, and it doesn't seem to diminish the capture or, or have the same stereotype. So, yeah, I think it's just a case of mindset. It's where you draw the line. It's how you feel about them. And, and, and that's the beauty of angling. It's personal to you. Now, that solid bag is out there and fishing. But what was evident when I waded out there was that there is a good population of roach in this venue. And we're fishing a solid PVA bag with loads of little pellets in. It's basically a roach's dinner. So my bag is probably getting messed around with as we speak by loads of roach. So to combat that and deal with that issue, what I'm gonna do is use two additional rods, both fished on a pop-up. That gives me a bigger hook bait. It's more roach proof, if you like. And hopefully that will single out the carp that are still showing in that area. In terms of the ready rig I'm going to use, it's the good old faithful Ronnie Claw rig, a favourite of mine, a size four pattern. And basically all I need to add to get that fish in is an anti-tangle sleeve, which I slip down, which will connect it to my lead system neatly. And the lead system I've chosen for this is a real simple cling-on unleaded leader, a heavy duty lead clip, a four ounce lead because there is a little bit of a crosswind. And <clears throat> then I'm going to attach that via the anti-tangle sleeve and the little loop in the end of the ready rig. The only other thing I'm going to do is obviously add a pop-up 
which in this case is going to be a 15 mil Scopex squid pop-up in yellow. And I'll try a pink too, as they're my favourite. And two blobs of putty, one near the knot of the Ronnie swivel to act as a counterbalance to get that pop-up sunk, if you like. And I'll test that in the margin before I chuck it out. And the other bit of putty will be halfway along the hook length just to ensure that it's pinned down. I'm going to get those two clipped onto their leaders, fired out there where those fish are showing, and hopefully, I'll certainly be a little bit more confident in my head knowing those roach are there with these bigger, more robust presentations. Two hours have passed and I'm still fishing in the same manner. I've cast those rigs, those two pop-ups and the solid bag at those showing fish. And to be fair, as we draw into the evening now, the shows have subsided to some extent. What I think I'm gonna do is let them fish probably for another hour or so. And just before we lose all the light, I'm gonna find a spot, something nice and firm and presentable, put a good hit of bait out and then fish over the top. I'm gonna to keep one probably on a Ronnie, but I am gonna fish the others, hopefully, if the spot's clean enough that I can find, and I'm sure it will be, judging by all the terrain that I can see before me and this low water level. And then what I'm gonna do is present on the bottom itself. I'm gonna use a blowback rig, and I'm gonna use slightly bigger hook baits, maybe something like a snowman, just again to eradicate any roach problems that could be potentially out there when I put some bait out. I think that's the plan. Until then, I'm gonna get my first brew, settle in. Hopefully we can get off the mark with a quick bite. If not, out goes the bait. And who knows through the course of the night and early morning. And pretty much that afternoon and evening ebbed away, really. So we're five hours in, rapidly losing the light. And classically for me, I've not really settled. I've had those three, if you like, single hook baits and that bag out there on those showing fish and it's not materialized. Put a good hit of bait out and find a nice clean spot. Now, because I've got a clean spot, I'm changing my ready rig presentation to complement the exact spot that I'm fishing over. Because that spot's so clean, I don't really want three pop-ups on the spot. I want to fish on the deck. Just like all the bait I've introduced, it's going to be hard on the bottom. It's nice and clean. I want something to mimic that same presentation. So I've gone for ring blowback rigs. I'm going to fish two of them in the middle of the spot, the cleanest possible part, and then I'm going to fish one on a Ronnie rig, just a little pop-up just off the bait. That can often tempt a bigger fish, but also it gives me a little buffer because the spot is a little less clear as we go wider of the main part of the spot. That's enough theory. I'm going to clip on a quick anti-tangle sleeve, get these rigs done and out, and I'm going into the night confident with a bit of bait out there fishing on a really nice, clean spot. Fingers crossed, the Naseby Cart played ball. Well, the night was absolutely carnage to say the least. It has happened, we just had some lovely burgers, a bit of tea, it's just got dark, the moon's creeping up, and on cue, the left-hander's pulled up. A bare bit of bait over that spot. Again, this I think may be on one of the ring blowback rigs on the clean part of the spot, fishing over that bait and that bait definitely has prompted some activity. We've got a lovely wind trickling in as well. And fingers crossed, this one can get me off the mark and we can get work in that spot and maybe get a few more bites. I think that's a fish. That is a fish. Grab the net. I oh, know it's not. Sort of a line. I thought it was a fish. I got really excited. <laughs> well, there you have it. I'm off the mark. A lovely Naseby 20 pounder caught on that blowback rig, on that nice clean spot over some bait. Before I've got this out of the water, I've quickly got a new one out of the packet, got it back out on the spot to hopefully capitalise on this bite time. But I'm chuffed to get off the mark. There's 16 hours left. Let's see 
if Naseby can grace us with maybe a couple more. I've just slipped that 20 pounder back. Just put the kettle back on. Curly was complaining I've not made him enough brews on this shoot. And the left-hander again has picked up the rod that I just pretty much rechucked that had had the original take. So maybe these fish are moving in from the left and hitting this spot. But either way, two bites in a very short period of time is really good signs over that bait. One of the key features of, of any angling of this style when you've got numbers of fish is being able to capitalise on those bite opportunities or those windows and bite times. And in order to do that, you've got to be prepared and you've got to be efficient and speedy. With regards to those ready rigs, it was a case of getting those three rods out and then having another couple of rigs ready to go. And it was a case of just clipping them on once it's wrapped up, out onto the money, and then you're fishing again with minimal disturbance and in minimal time. And that really, especially through the night when it was hectic, and it's always difficult when you're playing sort of fish through your other lines at night time. It definitely allowed me to be fishing and presented on that baited area a lot yeah. more so than if I was cool. faffing around, having to sort another rig out, attach whatever. It's just basically working that spot and being fishing for as much time as possible and capitalizing on those bite windows. But without that, without that speed and efficiency, I wouldn't have got as many bites. No two ways about it. Well, fish number four is sulking in the net, propped up safely there. I just got the rig back out, tickled the spot with three more dot spots. And just as I was reeling in the last of the three dot spots, it's ripped off. Just goes to show you that pressing repeat when you've got something working, Bosh. fishing accurately, yes. and those reliable ready rigs. That might be the best one, yeah. The old ring blowbacks Ooh. are doing the business. And here is number five of a very, very busy, but enjoyable night. The bait's back out on the spot, so are the rods. Fingers crossed for some more action. Who needs sleep? My main ready rig of choice in this session has been the ring blowback rig. In terms of components, it's comprised of 25 pound semi-stiff skin link. It's got a tungsten kicker to a size six or size four that I've been using in this session. Fang X hook, a really sharp, reliable, strong pattern. And just to finish it off here, I've got a little tungsten anti-tangle sleeve. It's a really simple, effective rig. For me, how I like to fish it is I like to fish it on cleaner bottoms with either a bottom bait or predominantly a hook bait that has some form of buoyancy. Why that's important to me is because a lot of the time when the rigs are out there, carp are doing us, they're taking our bait and not necessarily getting hooked. And that buoyancy in the hook bait allows the rig to reset. Couple that with the ring that's on the shank, it can be blowed back into position and it's always out there fishing for you. In terms of how I like it to sit on the bottom with that buoyancy, here you can see I've got a little snowman presentation, but essentially I want the hook to lie flat on the lake bed, a nice clean lake bed, and I want the snowman to sit with the bottom bait and the little pop-up just cocked. I don't want the hook wafting off the bottom or anything like that. That's my preferred way of it sitting, ready for hopefully Mr. Carp to come and take it. As it's proved here, it can be ultra effective. If you're looking for a rig in that type of situation, look no further than the old ring blowback presentation. And I think by morning I'd had something along the lines of maybe five, six fish. From that point, I had a sort of frantic early morning feeding spell after getting, I'd say all of 45 minutes sleep. After a thoroughly entertaining and busy night, it looks like the action's continued has managed a little bit of a lull, I don't know, an hour or so. Everybody's managed to crash out and get a little bit of sleep. But I've managed to nick a bite on first light and this is quickly followed by another one which I'm currently playing. Well, double take. What can you say? That spot is certainly working. I'm gonna do what is the right thing now that this fish is definitely hooked and concentrate on the fish on my left hand rod 
put this one in the rest and hope that it's still there at the end. Either way, <laughs> what a session. <laughs> what a hero. <laughs> that is the one, mate. Some people stand in the darkness, afraid to step. Oh, she's still on, isn't she? Bit busy, this fishing lark, mate. <laughs> it's been a cracking few hours. I'm not even sure how many hours I've got left. But there isn't a much better way to start a morning than having to get the cameraman out of bed extra early to help play one of your rods in while you're playing another one. Go on, Tony. Yes. Well done, that man. My name's Tony and welcome to my 24. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Can you make out on this camera that I'm deliriously tired? <laughs> Go on, Tone. What a fight. He doesn't, doesn't he want it. Yes. Cheers, mate. Well done. Well done. The crew were shattered, bless them. They'd worked hard to capture all the footage through the night. Um, and I had four takes in, yeah, between 4 a.m. and maybe half 5 a.m. in the morning. That is the final and best of a mad morning's activity. All come into that same spot, 25 wraps over the bait and on those ready tied ring blowback rigs. And to be fair, throughout the course of the night and this morning, those ready rigs really have come into their own. I'm able to get fishing ultra quickly, get a new rig on and back out onto the spot and maximize the bite time. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits to be back on. Hopefully we can carry on getting some bites through the course of the day. But if we don't, it's been lovely to come back here. There's some mega, mega sport to be had. Now, in terms of the bait mix that I've been using in this session, I've had to adapt it slightly, as you'd have heard when I saw the sort of abundant roach population. The bulk of my mix, I'd say probably 60 to 70% is 12 mil and 15 mil Scopex squid boilies. But what I've done, and it can often be a real edge on these type of venues where lots of people fish, there's a lot of bait going in, and there's, a vet, there's an abundance of fish that can patrol around and generally they're picking up older bait. So what I've done is I've washed them out. 24 hours before coming here, I've put a load of water over the level of the boilies and I've sealed the lid and I've left them. I've added a little bit of Scopex squid um, syrup to that, but only a little bit and I've let them and I've let them soak. And what happens is they become an awful lot softer, but also they take on this washed out appearance, which mimics what older bait would look like out in the lake. And I think sometimes, especially when conditions are pretty tricky, like they are today, it's very sunny, and fish are grazing, that older bait is often treated as safer and fed upon more readily. So the bulk of my mix is washed out boilies. To that, I will add a little concentration, a few handfuls of fresh, non-washed out 15 and 12 mil Scopex squid boilies. Because of the roach, I've got some six mil Scopex squid pellet, but really only a smattering of that. Finally, just a little bit of flake. Obviously, again, it's very roachy, but it helps bind the mix, make it heavier and get it down in the sort of five to seven foot of water that I'm fishing in. So a tiny bit of flake over the top. And the only other addition, it's really simple, is the Scopex squid syrup. A really liberal glug in of that. Mix it all together. Out it goes. And it certainly proved effective in this session. Well, there's certainly been a little bit of a lull in the activity. I've got six hours, 48 minutes left. I definitely feel there's still fish out towards that spot, but what I'm gonna do is instead of fishing hard on the deck with those ring blowback rigs, they've done really well, I'm gonna fish a little more of a blatant sort of pop-up. Maybe the fish are mooching around the spot, they're not really feeding as hard as they were, and I think a nice, bright, higher track pop-up just in their face can often get a reactionary bite and stimulate some more activity. So I'm gonna switch to three Ronnie Claw rigs, get them out there on the same mark, and also 
before I do that, knock up a bit more bait. Fresh bait, fresh rigs, new approach, same spot, and hopefully can tempt a daytime bite or two. The range as a whole, there are nine different versions to suit various different hook baits, angling situations, and scenarios that you might find yourself in. They're available in both barbed and barbless versions, and also in a multitude of different hook sizes and patterns. My 60 second top tip is very simply the use of the Hook Doctor tool. Now, whether you're using ready tied rigs or your own rigs, using a Hook Doctor tool can prolong the life of that rig. There's nothing more frustrating than casting out, getting fish feeding, having a fish, and your hook point being slightly blunted. Instead of having to tie a new rig or find a new ready tied rig, you can use the Hook Doctor tool to fine tune that hook point, get a little bit more longevity and economy from your tackle, get out there fishing even quicker and effectively, and maximize those bite time windows of opportunity. It doesn't matter what type of angler you are, there's definitely a usage for the Hook Doctor tool, so look out for it and get on it. To say I'm shocked that I've had this bite, is a true understatement. It's blisteringly hot. It's more like Ibiza than it is Naseby. There's been absolutely no activity over the spot. We've been absolutely sweating our proverbials off on the bank. And to be honest, I was contemplating a slightly early pack up. Out of nowhere, the middle rod has pulled tight and absolutely screened off. I've kept the odd dot spot of bait going in over the spot every hour or so, just in case there are a few fish straggling. And I've obviously changed those Ronnie rigs with those higher track pop-ups to try and tempt a quick bite over that spot. And it's paid off. I've got an hour and a half left to go, so I'm in the death of my 24. It's been an incredibly busy, eventful, and enjoyable trip down memory lane. Let's just hope I can end it on a positive note with carp number 10 in my landing net. Bosh, number 10, get in. I'm chuffed with that, to be fair, that's a good hit. Well, would you believe it? That is carp number 10 of my 24. At the start of it, I'd have settled for half that number of bites. Naseby's been truly kind on my return. I've got less than an hour left. To be honest, if I don't get another bite, I do not mind at all. It's been an unbelievably busy, productive and enjoyable session. I hope it's illustrated the effectiveness of ready-tied rigs. I've had the loveliest of times.